Hey everyone, welcome back to It's Tech Time. Today we're diving into online privacy with a topic that's gained a lot of attention, and that is Tor, or what's otherwise known as the Onion Router. In this video, we'll explore how Tor works and why it's become an essential tool for many internet users concerned about privacy. But before we begin, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon for more tech and privacy related content. If you're not familiar with Tor, you may be wondering what is Tor and how does it work? So Tor is a free open source software that allows users to browse the internet anonymously. Tor does this by bouncing your connection through a series of volunteer operated servers, with each server encrypting the data at each step of the process. This process creates layers, layers like on an onion, hence the name the onion router. So imagine you're sending a letter. Instead of sending it directly to the recipient, you put it in multiple envelopes, each with a different address on the outside of it. And as it travels, each server removes one layer and the final server sends the letter to the destination. This way it's challenging for anyone to trace the letter all the way back to you. This is how Tor works. So you're sitting at your computer and you connect through the Tor browser. The first relay you come to is a guard relay. It receives your data and adds the first layer of encryption on it, similar to like an onion. The only thing the guard sees is the IP address that you're coming from. It doesn't see where you're going or any other information about you. So there's no way for it to log what you're doing. And the only information the guard has is the address for the next relay. The second relay is the middle relay. The middle really can't see your IP address that you originated from, and it can't see the IP address of where you're headed. The only thing it can see is the IP address of the entry guard relay, and all it does is add another layer of encryption on top of your information. So now you have at least two layers of encryption. Most of the volunteer relays that are set up are middle relays, which is a good thing for you typical hobbyists out there, since they can't see your IP address or the IP address of where you're going. If someone is to do something illegal on the dark web, you'll have no information that you would be liable for if the authorities were to get involved. The last relay you will connect to is the exit relay. It does have access to your destination IP address and can see what you're connecting to. However, that destination, the only thing it can see is the IP address of that exit relay, which then will route all this traffic back through the middle relay, through the entry guard relay, and back to your client therefore keeping you completely confidential in this connection. Most exit nodes are gonna be operated by universities or large organizations. This is because if someone is to do something illegal on the dark web, the authorities will first go to the IP address for the exit node. And these large organizations are usually better equipped to handle that process. For anyone interested though, Tor does supply legal documents that you can use and view if you are interested in setting up an exit node. So let's say you're sitting at your computer and you want to visit uh, some website, CNN.com, for example. So you open your Tor browser, you type in CNN.com, and what happens in the background is your initial packet goes to, goes to a guard relay first. Now, all that guard relay can see is your originating IP address. And then that guard relay takes that information packet and it circles it in a layer of security and it sends it to what is a middle relay. And then this middle relay takes this packet of information that's encrypted and adds yet another layer of encryption on top of it. So just like an onion, you got your information, you got one layer and another layer protecting your information. All the middle relay can do is put a layer of encryption on it and then send it to the exit relay. Then the exit relay takes this information and queries CNN.com. And all CNN.com can see is the IP address of the exit relay. And all the exit relay can see is that you're at CNN.com. And then what CNN does is it sends the information you need back through the relay as an encrypted packet, through the middle relay, back through the guard relay, and back to your computer. So CNN has no clue who queried it, and none of the relays know what you're doing. And so everything is kept completely private. And so that's why a lot of journalists will use this so that... Uh, who they're talking to is kept private and the information they're trading back and forth is kept private too. And that's also why when I visited CNN.com earlier, none of the pop-ups automatically started running on it because for one thing, it didn't know where I was actually coming from and so which pop-ups to automatically run for you. And it also prevents advertising track advertisements from tracking you as you're browsing social media too. We've all had the example of Facebook suggesting an ad for you that you were looking up earlier in Google. 
So all this brings up the question of why should you use Tor? Well, Tor offers a range of privacy benefits. First and foremost, it helps anonymize your online activity by masking your IP address. This makes it more difficult for websites, advertisers, or even your internet service provider to track your browsing habits. Here is a side-by-side -side of CNN.com, one through a Chrome browser and the other through a Tor browser. And it should already be noticeable that the one big difference is that Tor does not autoplay any of the pop-ups or advertisements, whereas Chrome did autoplay them. And also Tor doesn't auto-load the photos until you get to them. So that is one really big difference between the two. Now let's talk about some common use cases for Tor. Whether you're a journalist working on a sensitive story or an activist in a restricted regime in a country that limits your internet access or simply someone that values online privacy, for example, if you're tired of all the pop-ups you saw in the Chrome browser compared to the Tor browser, Tor provides a level of anonymity that traditional browsers can't match. And if you keep up with the news at all, probably the most famous example of somebody that used a Tor browser to communicate with journalists would be Ed and Snowden back in 2013. Journalists, for example, use Tor to communicate securely with sources because it protects both their identity and the information that they share. Activists in countries that limit web activity rely on Tor to access and share information without fear of retribution against them. And there you have it, an introduction to Tor, how it works, and why you might want to use it. In the next video, we'll get into all the different ways you can access Tor. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to share it with anyone who might benefit from learning about online privacy. Thank you for watching, and as always, stay curious and stay secure. I will see you in the next video.